where it was not useful for any purpose. We don't have any evidence in the desert of Sinai to Israelites, you know, living there or wandering there for 40 years. Nothing of this sort was found. And the entire uh, question of the exodus and the conquest of the country by the Israelites remained very much enigmatic from the archaeological point of view, in spite of the fact that tons of papers or, and thousands of words were written on this subject by both historians and archaeologists who tried for dozens of years to illustrate uh, uh, this relationship. It is a very difficult issue. We have so many Egyptian analogues of the 13th century that the exodus looks, uh, of course, it has been exaggerated, but the kernel of it looks historical. We know that Semitic population lived in the land of Goshen. We know from many Egyptian sources. And then we know the Apiru, and Apiru is most likely Hebrew. And the Apiru built the city of Ramses and the city of Pitom. And that is what is said in the Bible. You have material very interesting of the founder of the next dynasty, of the 21st dynasty. He says the following. There were Semitic people in Egypt who endangered the Egyptian. And they lobbied, they made a lobby with faction, let us call it A with a faction in Egypt to make a rebellion and to dethrone me. But there was faction B, and faction B uh, threw out these elements, that is the Israelites most likely, into the wilderness. And I said Nacht, the new founder of the, he didn't say 21st dynasty, but of this dynasty became Pharaoh. There is circumstantial evidence that I think lends some weight uh, to what the biblical text tells us about the Exodus. For example, we know in Exodus that when Israel was leaving Egypt, they did not go by the way of the land of the Philistines, but went by another route deeper into the Sinai. Now, up until the last decade, it would have been, would have been difficult to know why Israel went by that deeper route into Sinai. I came to the site of Dir al-Balakh in the Gaza Strip in a way in the footsteps of the search for the Philistines. Uh, I don't know if I found the Philistines, but I did find a very fascinating, exciting Egyptian outpost, which is from the period of the Exodus, when we found uh, the site itself, and on this site, a fortress of the 13th century, end of the 13th century, uh, the idea came up that this is really one of the reasons that we had a fortress which was one of many fortresses kind of dotting the way from Kantara, from Sile up to Gaza. And uh, that was very well fortified. And that's why the, Egypt the Israelites did not want to go on the short way to uh, Canaan, but chose the long way to the Sinai because they were afraid of the Egyptians and the fortification that were on this short road. I think everybody, with a few exceptions, agrees that the conquest was an historical event because even pottery changed. Canaanite pottery, Israelite pottery, it's a little different. So there is a new culture. Uh, maybe it's not very well attested, but uh, it, wa it seems to be an historical event because Israel became the major nation. When Joshua came to the city of Jericho, he came to a typical Canaanite city, fortified with lead brick walls. Behind me in the tale of old Jericho are the possibly the walls from the time of Joshua. The peakish colored stones are what remains of those mud brick walls which have been fired by the heat of destruction. And above it, we see an ash layer, which is indicative of a destruction layer. Very well, possibly the walls from the time of Joshua's invasion and the destruction which followed. In Joshua chapter 7 and 8, we have the account of the Israelite capture of the city of Ai. That's been a problem in biblical archaeology for many years because the site that scholars have identified as Ai of that story has no occupation from the time of the conquest. 
In fact, there was no occupation there uh, for about 1,000 years from the time of the patriarchs all the way down to uh, the time of the 12th century BC. Our organization, the Associates for Biblical Research, has been doing field work to locate what we believe uh, should be the true site of I. We've been investigating a site called Herbert L. Makater, which is about 10 miles north of Jerusalem, also uh, east of Albira. The new site offers uh, a good possibility of being the site of I because it fits the topographical or the geographical requirements of the Bible, and our excavations so far uh, show promise of it being a fortress from the time of Joshua. As far as the geography is concerned, we have uh, to the east of the site of Kerbet el Makater, a very deep wadi or valley called the Wadi Shaban, which would make an excellent hiding place for the ambush force. The account in Joshua 8 speaks about an ambush force that hid to the west of Ai, between Ai and Bethel. In addition to that, we've found evidence for a city wall at the site and also have found what we believe to be the gate of the site from the time of the conquest. So we even have evidence of fighting there, uh, some evidence of fire. We're told that after the Israelites conquered Ai, they set the city on fire. And as we continue our work, uh, we hope we'll find additional evidence to support the truth of the biblical account. One of the largest tells in all of Israel is Tel Hatzor, yet it's been largely unexcavated. The digging season now has stopped, but in seven previous seasons of excavation under the direction of Amnon ben Tor, extraordinary finds have been coming to light, and even greater finds are expected for the future. He has been excavating the Acropolis of Tel Hatzor, where he has uncovered the palace of the Canaanite kings. It is still uncertain whether these are one or two palaces. What has been discovered thus far has walls that stand more than six feet high. The remains show that it was destroyed in a terrible fire whose intense heat helped preserve the buildings and relics in a magnificent state. Among the finds have been artifacts, works of art, pottery, architecture, bronze, and ivories. One of the great discoveries here were written documents, ten of which have been found dating between the 14th and 18th centuries BC. These may be evidence of a Canaanite archive near the palace, the first that will be discovered in Israel. Here at Gibeon, some 3,000 years of history are we mentioned in the Bible. It was at Gibeon that this ancient water pool existed. The Bible mentions that one time the tabernacle stood here in the days of David and Solomon. It was to this place that Solomon came and prayed and received wisdom from God. Here, Joab and Abner, two of David's mighty men, fought a contest. And the Gibeonites played a very important role in the time of Joshua. Later, it was because King Saul tried to destroy this place that he and his own house perished on Mount Gilboa. Every archaeologist dreams of finding inscriptional material at his site. On July 21st of 1993, here at the excavation at Tel Dan, just such an inscription was found, an inscription containing very exciting confirmation of a biblical figure. In a wall, constructed somewhere around the end of the 9th, beginning of the 8th century BC, we found a fragment of a basalt with lines inscribed in Aramaic which speak of a battle between the Israelites and the Arameans, of which the Bible is full. There was, there was constant, uh, we know from the Bible that there was warfare between Israel and Damascus. And here apparently, is a victor stile by a king of Damascus. What was very thrilling was to find that he speaks about Melech Yisrael, king of Israel, that he defeated the king of Israel. And then the line begins with the letter Chaf, which is the last letter of the word Melech, and next to it is Beit David, house of David. 